1903, workers digging a drainage ditch in Cheddar Gorge, Somerset, found a nearly complete skeleton wedged in a cave. They had no idea they just discovered Britain's oldest near-complete human, or that his DNA would shatter everything we thought we knew about who the first Britons really were. For over a century, this skeleton lay in the Natural History Museum, labeled, cataloged, studied. But it wasn't until 2018 that scientists finally extracted his DNA. And when they did, the face they reconstructed looked nothing like the pale-skinned, fair-haired hunter-gatherers everyone had imagined. This is Cheddar Man. He lived 10,000 years ago, and he had dark skin and blue eyes. But that discovery? That was just the beginning. Because in 2022, scientists extracted even older DNA from skeletons dating back 15,000 years. And what they found reveals something that rewrites everything. Britain wasn't just settled by different groups with different cultures. The first people to arrive after the Ice Age, the pioneers who crossed into Britain as the glaciers melted, were completely replaced, gone, vanished, zero descendants, wiped out by a second wave of migration within just a few centuries. This isn't gradual evolution. This is total population replacement. And the DNA proves it beyond any doubt. Let me show you what really happened. It's 18,000 years ago. For millennia, the British Isles have been buried under ice sheets a mile thick. Absolute inhospitality. Nothing survives. No humans, no animals, just ice. But as the Earth's axis shifts and the sun's warmth returns, the ice begins to melt. Glaciers retreat. Torrents of meltwater carve new valleys. Open frontiers emerge. And into this transforming world come the first people of the New Age. Between 26,000 and 19,000 years ago, Europe was a frigid wilderness. Ice sheets swallowed Scandinavia and all of Britain. Only a few refuge zones in southern France, northern Spain, and parts of Italy supported small bands of hunter-gatherers. These were the survivors, huddled in the last habitable corners of the continent. But by 18,000 years ago, the glaciers started collapsing. New landscapes emerged from beneath the ice. And across this landscape came the Magdalenians, the last major culture of the Upper Paleolithic, flourishing from about 17,000 to 12,000 years ago. These weren't primitive cavemen. They were highly skilled, creating fine stone blades, antler spear points, bone needles, engraved stones, and most famously, stunning cave art. The paintings at Lascaux, Altamira, Chauvet, horses, bison, lions rendered in breathtaking detail. That was the Magdalenians, around 16,000 years ago. The ice had completely retreated from Britain, and a vast landmass surfaced. Doggerland. This wasn't some narrow land bridge connecting Britain to Europe. It was an enormous region, covering what's now the entire North Sea, an area larger than many modern European countries. Lakes dotted the landscape, marshes teemed with birds, woodlands spread across rolling hills, rivers carved through fertile valleys. Doggerland wasn't a barren wasteland, it was a thriving ecosystem. Herds of horses, reindeer, and wild cattle grazed across its plains. Mammoths may have still survived in isolated pockets. Fish filled the rivers. Seals basked along the coasts. This was a natural highway for animals and humans moving northward. A paradise for hunter-gatherers. And across this landscape came Britain's first post-glacial settlers around 15,500 years ago, the Criswellians, Britain's local expression of the Magdalenian cultural tradition. They carried harpoons made from reindeer antler flint blade toolkits, sophisticated hunting technology, and one of their most important sites, Guff's Cave in Cheddar Gorge, Somerset. Excavations spanning more than a century have produced an extraordinary collection. Tools, animal bones, and most haunting of all, human remains. Bearing signs of ritualistic cannibalism, at least six individuals, from a small child of about three to several adults, their skulls were shaped into polished skull cups, Cut marks and processing patterns show these weren't desperate acts of survival, but structured mortuary rituals. Meanwhile, 200 miles away, Kendrick's cave in Wales told a different story. Human remains there showed evidence of careful burials, accompanied by red ochre and personal ornaments. No cannibalism, just reverent treatment of the dead. These remains, dated between 15,000 and 13,000 years ago, represented the earliest known post-glacial population of Britain. But for decades, they were just bones scattered across limestone caverns. Archaeologists could only infer so much. The deeper truth of WHO these people actually were remained locked inside the cells of their remains. Then came the breakthrough. In 2022, scientists published the oldest human DNA ever sequenced from the British Isles. Using high-resolution radiocarbon dating, they confirmed the precise ages of the remains. Then they drilled into dense areas like the Petrus bone, 
the hardest, most DNA protective part of the skull, extracting fragments of ancient genetic material. The challenge was immense. Britain's acidic soils destroy bone rapidly. And in Paleolithic remains, DNA often degrades into unrecognizable fragments. But modern techniques made the impossible possible. And the results? Stunning. The woman from Goff's cave, who lived around 14,700 years ago, whose bones bore clear signs of ritual defleshing, belonged to a lineage called Goyet Q2. Let me explain what that means. A lineage in genetics is a group that shared the same ancient ancestors. The Goyet Q2 lineage is named after Goyet Cave in Belgium, where some of the earliest known individuals of this branch were found. These people lived across Europe. Between 35,000 and 15,000 years ago, they represent some of the oldest modern humans on the continent. The Guff's Cave woman's mitochondrial DNA, genetic signatures passed down unchanged from mother to child, was haplogroup U8A. U8A is extremely rare today, found in less than 1% of modern Europeans. But during the late Upper Paleolithic, between 15,000 and 20,000 years ago, it was common across Western and Central Europe. Individuals with U8A have been found in Belgium, Germany, France, Spain, all part of the same Ice Age population. The Goyette Q2 lineage. These were the people who endured, who survived when two-thirds of Europe was covered in ice, who huddled in refuge zones and developed sophisticated survival strategies. The Magdalenian culture they created wasn't just about survival. It was about thriving in impossible conditions. Their stone tools show incredible craftsmanship. Microliths so precisely made they could only have been created by master artisans. Their bone needles allowed them to sew fitted clothing, essential for surviving ice age winters. Their art, the cave paintings, the carved figurines, the engraved stones, show a people with complex symbolic thought and spiritual beliefs. This woman from Guff's cave was a direct descendant of Europe's earliest ice age humans, the survivors, the pioneers. She was one of the last of her kind. But here's where it gets shocking. The second individual, a male from Kendrick's cave in Wales, dated to around 13,500 years ago, told a dramatically different story. His mitochondrial lineage was U5A2, part of a younger branch of the human family tree. His genome-wide ancestry matched what scientists call the Villa Bruna Cluster. Also known as Western hunter-gatherers, this group emerged around 14,000 years ago representing a new genetic wave entering Europe. The Villa Bruna cluster is named after a skeleton found in Veneto, Italy, in a cave near the town of Villa Bruna. These people had survived the Ice Age in different refuge zones than the Goyet Q2 Magdalenians. While the Magdalenians weathered the glaciation in France and northern Spain, the Villa Bruna ancestors survived farther southeast, in northern Italy, around the Italian Alps, in the Balkans, in refuges near the Adriatic and Mediterranean seas. When the climate warmed, both groups expanded northward, but the Villa Bruna Western hunter-gatherers brought different skills, different hunting strategies, different cultural practices. They weren't tundra specialists like the Magdalenians. They were adapted to more varied environments, forests, river valleys, coastal regions. And as Europe's landscape transformed from open steppe to dense woodland, they had the advantage. The Kendrick's caveman belonged to a population that would later give rise to most Mesolithic hunter-gatherers across Europe, his burial adorned with ochre and decorated objects, emphasized a culture very different from the ritual cannibalism at Guff's cave. Do you see what this means? These two individuals, living only one pond 200 years apart, less than 200 miles from each other, came from completely different Ice Age lineages. The woman from Guff's cave was descended from the oldest Europeans, the Goyet Q2 people who survived the worst of the Ice Age. The man from Kendrick's cave was from a newer population, the Villa Brunin at Western hunter-gatherers expanding from the southeast. And here's the critical discovery. For the first time, science had direct genetic proof that Britain experienced a complete population turnover between 15,000 and 14,000 years ago. The earlier Magdalenian-derived inhabitants, the Goyet Q2 people, left no later descendants on the island. Their genetic line disappeared entirely. The Western hunter-gatherer lineage arrived within centuries and replaced them completely. Total. Population. Replacement. Not interbreeding. Not gradual mixing. Replacement. But why? What happened? The answer lies in the climate. As the Earth warmed during what scientists call the Bulling Alarud period, around 14 to 700 to 12,900 years ago, Britain transformed dramatically. The open icy steppe that had characterized the landscape, with its sparse vegetation and cold adapted animals, began disappearing. Trees spread rapidly, first birch and pine, then oak, elm, and hazel. Within just a few centuries, 
Dense forests covered most of Britain. The animal population shifted completely. Reindeer, the staple prey of Magdalenian hunters, migrated north following the retreating tundra. Horses became less common. Mammoths vanished entirely, either dying out or moving to colder regions. New species moved in. Red deer thrived in the forests. Wild boar rooted through the undergrowth. Aurochs, massive wild cattle, grazed in forest clearings. The Goyat Q2 people, the Magdalenians, were specialized in tundra, hunting. Their entire toolkit, their hunting strategies, their cultural knowledge, was built around pursuing reindeer and horses across open landscapes. When the forest spread, they lost the environment their entire way of life depended on. Some probably moved north, following the reindeer into Scandinavia. Others may have adapted, trying to shift their hunting techniques, but they were competing with people who already knew how to thrive in forests. The Western hunter-gatherers expanding from Italy and the Balkans were skilled forest hunters. They knew how to track deer through dense woodland, how to fish the abundant rivers, how to exploit forest resources like hazelnuts and roots. They had bow technology better suited to forest hunting, where quick shots through trees mattered more than long-distance throws across open plains. They expanded through Doggerland and into Britain as the landscapes changed, moving into an environment they were perfectly adapted for. And the Magdalenian people, within a few centuries, they were gone from Britain, completely replaced by this new population with different DNA, different skills, different culture. And now we get to Cheddar Man. Remember him? Dark skin, blue eyes, died 10,000 years ago. When scientists analyzed his DNA, they found he had a mixture of ancestries. 85% Western hunter-gatherer, the Villa Bruna lineage like the Kendrick's caveman, but 15% from the older Goyet Q2 lineage, the Magdalenians like the Guff's cavewoman, which means somewhere between 14,000 and 10,000 years ago, the two populations that had replaced each other eventually met again somewhere on the continent, and they had children together. By Cheddar Man's time, 10,000 years ago, Britain's population was a blend, mostly the newer Western hunter-gatherers, but with traces of the ancient Magdalenian lineage mixed back in. But even this blended population, even Cheddar Man's people, still had dark skin. The genetic markers analyzed from his DNA placed him firmly in the dark to dark black pigmentation categories. Despite thousands of years in Northern Europe, despite the mixing of populations, pale skin hadn't evolved yet. That wouldn't happen until the Neolithic farmers arrived from Anatolia around 6,000 years ago, bringing agriculture and completely different genes. And when those farmers arrived, another population replacement, the Western hunter-gatherers, Cheddar Man's people, were themselves replaced. Modern Britons carry only about 10% Mesolithic hunter-gatherer ancestry. And that ancestry came primarily from continental populations, not British ones specifically. Cheddar Man's lineage, essentially gone. The Guff's cave woman's lineage, gone twice. Once 14,000 years ago when the Western hunter-gatherers replaced them, and again 6,000 years ago when the farmers arrived. Britain's history isn't one of gradual evolution. It's a story of repeated total population replacements. Wave after wave of new people, with new genes, new cultures, new ways of life, arriving, flourishing, and then being swept away by the next migration. The Magdalenians, replaced by Western hunter-gatherers. Western hunter-gatherers, replaced by Neolithic farmers. Neolithic farmers, heavily replaced by Bell Beaker metalworkers. Each wave bringing dramatic genetic turnover. Modern British people. They're a genetic mix of these later migrations not descendants of the first pioneers who crossed Doggerland 15,000 years ago. Those people left almost nothing in the modern gene pool. The reconstruction of Cheddar Man, created in 2018 using 3D scans of his skull and genetic data, shows a face that shocked the public. Artists Alphonse and Adri Kennis created a lifelike bust that now sits in the Natural History Museum. Dark to black skin, blue-green eyes, dark curly hair. When it was unveiled, the reaction was immediate. Some saw it as a powerful reminder that Britain has always been shaped by migration. Others claimed it was fake news or propaganda. The reconstruction became entangled in debates about immigration, Brexit, national identity. But the DNA doesn't care about politics. The DNA tells a scientific story that for 5,000 plus years after the Ice Age ended, from 15,000 BC to about 4,000 BC, the people living in Britain looked nothing like modern Britons. Dark skin, often blue eyes, different builds. They hunted with sophisticated tools, created art, practiced ritual cannibalism or reverent burial depending on their culture. They lived through dramatic climate change, adapting as tundra became forest. As Doggerland slowly flooded and Britain became an island around 8,000 years ago, 
And then, they vanished, not through gradual evolution, through replacement, wave after wave of new migrants, bringing new technologies, new genes, new cultures. The oldest DNA from Britain reveals something profound. Human populations don't evolve gradually in place. They move, they replace, they mix. Massive migrations happen repeatedly, often with complete or near complete genetic turnover. The Goyet Q2 Magdalenians, who were Britain's first post-glacial inhabitants, gone within centuries. The Western hunter-gatherers who replaced them, gone within a few thousand years. The Neolithic farmers who replaced them, heavily replaced by Bronze Age peoples. This pattern repeats across Europe, across the world. Ancient DNA is revealing the same story everywhere. The people living in a region 10,000 years ago bear little to no genetic relationship to the people living there now. In Britain specifically, there have been at least four major genetic turnovers since the Ice Age ended, each one bringing new DNA, new cultures, new ways of life, and each one replacing or heavily diluting what came before. These findings directly challenge the long-standing theory that early British populations evolved gradually from a single ancestral group. For decades, archaeologists assumed that the Criswellian culture of Britain simply evolved into later Mesolithic cultures, that the same basic population stayed in place, slowly adapting their tools and techniques as the environment changed. It seemed logical. Why would complete population replacement happen? But the DNA tells a different story. The DNA reveals something that bones and tools alone could never show. Complete genetic discontinuity. A total break in the maternal and paternal lineages. The woman from Guff's cave and the man from Kendrick's cave don't share common ancestors for at least 20,000 years. Back to when their lineages first split during an even earlier phase of the Ice Age. They're as genetically distinct as modern Europeans and modern East Asians. Ancient DNA revealed a far more dynamic human prehistory, marked by the migration and replacement of entirely different Ice Age lineages. The woman from Guff's cave, with her Goyet Q2 ancestry and her skull cup mortuary rituals, represents the last members of a much older lineage, a people whose roots lay in the deep Ice Age, who survived the worst glaciation Europe had ever seen, whose final presence in Britain was brief and ultimately replaced by the rise of the Western hunter-gatherers, expanding from Italy and the Balkans. Most importantly, these discoveries fundamentally rewrite the opening chapter of Britain's human story. They show that the very first post-glacial people were not the ancestors of those who followed. They were the last members of Europe's oldest modern human lineage, whose time had run out. Go back to that drainage ditch in 1903, when workers pulled Cheddar Man's bones from the cave. They thought they'd found an ancient Britain, and they had. But his story is far more complex than anyone imagined. He carried genes from two extinct populations, the ancient Goyet Q2 Magdalenians and the newer Villabruna Western hunter-gatherers, populations that had replaced each other in Britain, then mixed again somewhere on the continent. Dark skin, blue eyes, a genetic combination that no longer exists, the face that stares out at us from 10,000 years ago, created through cutting-edge science and forensic reconstruction, reminds us that the past looked very different from what we imagined, and that DNA can reveal truths that shatter our assumptions about who we are and where we came from. The first Britons? We know them now. The Goyet Q2 Magdalenians, who crossed Doggerland 15,500 years ago, bringing ritual cannibalism and Ice Age hunting traditions. The Villa Bruna Western hunter-gatherers, who replaced them 14,000 years ago, bringing forest hunting skills and burial rituals. And Cheddar Man, 10,000 years ago, carrying DNA from both lineages, dark-skinned and blue-eyed, all of them gone from the modern gene pool, replaced so completely that their genetic contributions are barely detectable today. This is what the oldest DNA from Britain reveals. Not a story of continuity, but a story of constant change, of populations arriving, thriving, and then disappearing, swallowed by the next wave of migrants. As more excavations continue and technology advances, we can expect even deeper insights into these ancient populations. More DNA, more revelations, more population replacements we never knew happened. The story keeps getting more complex the deeper we dig. What other population replacements happened that we don't know about yet? What else are we wrong about regarding human migration? Drop your theories in the comments below, and if you want more shocking ancient DNA discoveries that rewrite everything we thought we knew, subscribe and hit that notification bell because every new DNA study reveals that human history was far more dynamic than we ever imagined.